What's going on, everybody? Josh Engelman for AwesomeO.com, and I am back with my NFL DFS Top 5 for Week 3 in the NFL on DraftKings. Now, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. Then head to Twitter and follow me, at Josh Engelman. It's the only place that you'll get updates to my sim results as we get closer to lock. Let me know in the comment section. If you see anybody that you really like on my list, I want to know. If you see somebody on my list that you do not like, I want to know that too. Just let me know in the comment section underneath this video. And finally, shout out to No House Advantage for being the presenting sponsor of this video. Use the promo code AWESOMO when signing up. Get yourself a little bit of a bonus on that first deposit. We're looking at the defenses right now. Cardinals at the top of my list. We're going to dig in to the top five tight ends next. And as we look at tight end, we can see a very clear cut number one, a very obvious second tier, and then basically everybody else. Austin Hooper, Gerald Everett, Jared Cook, Noah Fant, and Kyle Pitts round out the bottom of my top 10. But as we make our way into the top five, it's not as if four and five are all that different than Pitts and Fant, but they are by just a little bit. First up at number five, we've got Travis Kelsey. He is 8,200 this week, monster price tag, projected for 20 fantasy points. He has a really nice matchup against the Chargers, 54 and a half point game total. That's the 27th ranked defense via PFF. 10% chance to go for north of 30. Just an 8% chance though of being in the optimal lineup because there are a couple values at tight end that makes it a little bit more difficult to land on Kelsey. There's not as much value at the bottom of running back and wide receiver. So it's harder to pay up here. I still like getting to Travis Kelsey, but there are better options this week. For example, you could pay a lot less salary and go to four, number four, Mark Andrews. He's 5K projected for 12 fantasy points. Great matchup against the Lions. Seven and a half point favorites, 50 point game total, and the Lions project to be the worst defense in football at PFF. Now, Mark Andrews isn't going for north of 30 the same way that Kelsey can, but he does have a 9% chance of being in the optimal because he's just that much more cost efficient. But now we start to change up the odds of being in the optimal. We're taking a big time jump up with TJ Hawkinson, 5,200, so a little bit more expensive than Andrews, but not really, projected for 14 fantasy points. Now they are underdogs, seven and a half point dogs to Baltimore, that same 50 point total. It's not a very good offense in Detroit, but it's not like the Ravens defense is super scary. They are 16th, that is completely average, and Hawkinson's getting a ton of work. Now we're not expecting the 30 point game, again, these are tight ends, but a 14% chance to be in the optimal. We're seeing, we have taken a step up in tier at tight end. I really like going to Hawkinson. I don't mind going here to number two. You can flip a coin between these two guys. They're only behind our number one tight end. And the number two guy this week is Darren Waller, 7,400. So expensive, but not the same way that Kelsey is. Projected for 19 fantasy points, gets a date with the Miami Dolphins, the 22nd ranked defense per PFF. They're favorites in this game by three and a half points. You don't love the total, just 44. But either way, we've seen Waller get a lot of work over these first two weeks. You know that's not going to change. There's a 9% chance he goes for north of 30 fantasy points. Now we're talking real upside. A 15% likelihood that he's the optimal tight end this week. If he were a couple hundred dollars, if he was like 7,200 or 7,100, he might have been able to fight for this number one spot. But for now, we've got a different guy at the top. Now, this one's terrifying because he busted last week. 4K Tyler Higby is at the number one spot. He's projected for 12 fantasy points. We've got a coin flip matchup in a monster total game between the Rams and the Bucks, 55 and a half points. Now, the Bucks defense is really good, but at 4K, if Higby gets in the end zone, you're probably happy. He's not going for north of 30. This is a cost efficient play, but 23% of the time, almost a quarter of the time you play out the slate, Tyler Higby is the most optimal tight end that you can roster. Now, as we transition to wide receiver, we've got Sterling Shepard, Van Jefferson, McCole Hardman, Tyler Lockett, and Marvin Jones on the outside of the top five. Now let's move it in to my top five at wideout where two through five are basically the same. And then we've got one guy that is greatly separated from the pack. At number five, we've got Keenan Allen, just 6,600, a very interesting price tag, projected for 18 fantasy points. He's on the road against KC, not a great defense, and you know there's going to be a lot of volume here. Seven point dogs, so they're going to be throwing, 54 and a half point game total, a 5% chance to go for north of 30 fantasy points, and a 14% likelihood of just simply being in the optimal lineup. I don't think that this is going to be a tough sell for anybody. Everybody will want to roster Keenan Allen at 6,600. I love this price tag. 
Now, Van Jefferson works as a paydown option. He came in at number nine. I don't think that there's a lot separating him from KJ Osborne, but Osborne is pulling a little bit more ownership. He's 3,500, projected for 11 fantasy points. This is a great passing environment for Minnesota, going up against the Seattle defense that isn't all that scary, and a 16% likelihood that Osborne is in the optimal lineup. Every catch is massive when you have a $3,500 player, so he can build up a really nice value pretty quickly. And if he happens to get in the end zone, you're probably going to need him, especially if anybody at the top end just pays off their salary in a big way. One of those big 30 point games. Some of these wide receiver salaries, I just can't get over. Chris Godwin, 6,100, projected for 18 fantasy points. Tough matchup, obviously, against the Rams, but a 55 and a half point total. Tampa Bay is gonna be slinging it. I can't even imagine how many attempts Tom Brady will end up with by the end of this game. They're gonna throw and throw and throw, and that benefits Godwin a ton. 4% likelihood to go for north of 30, and a 16% chance of being in the optimal. Godwin is just too cheap here. While it's a tough defensive matchup, there's going to be so many, so much volume with a 55 and a half point total that I want to get to Godwin almost more than anyone. But the best place you can be for this Sunday is definitely with the Rams. Robert Woods, number two, 5,700, projected for 17 fantasy points. Tough matchup against those Buck, uh, against that Bucks defense, but same matchup that the Bucks are getting. It's a 55 and a half point total, and they're going to throw the ball. 2% chance for Woods to go north of 30. So this isn't the big, big game you're hoping for, but 17% likelihood that he's just simply in the optimal. Again, the price is just too low for this spot. He should be 6,100, 6,200. It wouldn't look as ridiculous as it does right now, but Robert Woods gets to number two, and this won't be much of a surprise, but his teammate is number one with a bullet. And that number one play is Cooper Cup. He's been very involved over the first two weeks. He's only 6,800. He's projected for north of 21 fantasy points this week. It's a great game script, other than the fact that the Bucks defense is talented, but you're, there's going to be throws on throws on throws. And there are so many different ways that you can stack the Rams that I don't even think it's crazy to still go to Cup, even at some heavy ownership. He's a no brainer cash option. The first guy that we put into our lineup construction show earlier on Friday, 16% of the time he's going for north of 30, 29% likelihood of being in the optimal. There's no other way around it. Cooper Cup is quite clearly the number one wide receiver on this slate. Now, running back is pretty flat as well. We get a slight tick up in the number one spot, but it's it's pretty bunched together, if we're going to be honest. Derek Henry, DeAndre Swift, Saquon Barkley, Chris Carson, Najee Harris, they're rounding out the bottom of my top 10. But if we're being honest, you can kind of pick anybody in this top 10 and make a really good justification. We'll start with some value in Mike Davis. He's 5,100, projected for 14 fantasy points, taking on the Giants, 47 point total. Atlanta, slight dogs, so they're gonna be throwing. The Giants defense ranks 24th via PFF. What's not to like? You get a couple of those catches in a one point PPR situation for DraftKings, Davis is gonna look a lot better. A 15% chance of him being in the optimal. The price tag looks great. Gibson might just be my number one running back play this week, given his current ownership, which is definitely in the single digits last I looked. He's 5,900, projected for 16 fantasy points. It's a tough matchup against Buffalo, don't get me wrong. They are slightly behind, he'll still be involved. 45 and a half point total isn't the best. Then this Bills D does rank eighth. 2% chance for Gibson to go for north of 30, but 15% likelihood of just being in the optimal. I'm really interested in Gibson as a GPP play if he continues to maintain the 7 to 8% ownership that we have him projected for right now. I honestly don't know what to do here at number three. Clyde Edwards Alaire is now 4,800. He is priced like a very different running back, finally, I guess. Projected for 14 fantasy points. Great game environment against the Chargers, 54 and a half point total. The 27th ranked defense, no chance to really go for north of 30 fantasy points and a 16% chance of being in the optimal lineup. I don't know what to make of him any longer. We're talking about a guy that was an excellent pass catcher coming out of college that just does not do that any longer. I don't know why, I don't know what's changed, but now at 4,800, it doesn't even hurt you all that bad if it goes problematically. He's not priced the same way he has been, which really opens him up for week three. And then pretty firmly at number two, $6,300 Joe Mixon projected for 17 and a half fantasy points. Tough matchup against Pittsburgh, but 
for everything that Pittsburgh's defense has, the offense doesn't have it. So the Bengals should be very competitive in this spot. 43 point total, you would like a little bit more, but it's not as if Joe Mixon's workload is up in the air. This guy's gonna get it one way or the other, barring injury, which I shouldn't say right now since that happened to Christian McCaffrey and I said it during my showdown videos. 4% likelihood to go for north of 30, 17% chance to be in the optimal lineup. That puts Joe Mixon in the number two spot, just a little bit behind the number one guy. And that number one guy is Dalvin Cook. 8,400 projected for almost 24 fantasy points. He's taken on Seattle. It's an average matchup, but it doesn't matter what matchup you have when it's Dalvin Cook. There's a 55 point total and he is going to be involved in the entire game. He doesn't really leave the field. 8,400, I'm not mad about that price at all. Particularly when a guy has a 26% chance to go for north of 30 fantasy points and a 21% chance to be in the optimal lineup. There's enough value at wideout and at other running backs that getting to Dalvin Cook is pretty easy. And now we close it out at quarterback, Ryan Tannehill, Teddy Bridgewater, Tom Brady, Kyler Murray, and Pat Mahomes are rounding it all out. Quarterback is quarterback. It's not a position that I pay very close attention to. It's usually just going to be the guy that comes along for the ride with a wide receiver or two in my stacks, but we still have to rank them anyway because the guy that can be in the optimal 11% of the time is twice as likely to do it as someone like Kyler Murray. So at five, we've got Justin Herbert, 6,500. You know what you're getting here. Projected for 23 fantasy points and you expect him to throw and throw and throw in a matchup against Kansas City. Not a great defense, huge game total. Goes for north of 36% of the time, but he's only in the optimal 8%. It's just really difficult to really lock down on one individual quarterback. But we talked about Keenan Allen earlier. Justin Herbert and a Keenan Allen pairing looks pretty darn good this week. The most likely cash option is Matt Stafford, 6,400, 23 point fantasy pro projection. That matchup against the Bucks, that's tough, but we see Higby and Cup and Woods all inserted very highly at the top of wide receiver and tight end list, including being number one in both and number two. So you get a natural stack with a highly ranked Matt Stafford. This pairing is going to be very popular and it should be 9% likelihood though of Stafford being in the optimal, but he pairs very well with all of his pass catchers. Now at three, we can go to Lamar Jackson, pay 7,800. He taking, he's taking on the Detroit Lions, projected for 26 and a half fantasy points. It's the worst defense in football and Lamar should run all over the big favorites, 50 point total. Uh, running him out there naked seems more than okay for this week. A 26% chance to go for north of 30, but only a 9% chance to be the optimal quarterback. Either way, if you get him or if you have a pass catcher, if you want to go to a Mark Andrews as well, I see nothing wrong with it. But Lamar, just in general, it's not going to get any better than a date with the Lions. This one shocked me, but the price looks good. 5,800 for Daniel Jones against Atlanta, the number 29 ranked defense at PFF. 47 and a half point game total. They're favorites at home. Sterling Shepard showed up on the wide receiver list. 3% likelihood to go for north of 30 is a little scary, but Jones is coming off a really nice week last week and a 10% chance to be in the optimal lineup because of that savings that you get. 5,800, significantly cheaper than the other guys that we're talking about in this range. But unsurprisingly, the number one quarterback for this week is 7K Josh Allen. He's got a 25, 25 point fantasy projection taking on the football team. Uh, solid defense, unspectacular, 12th right now at PFF, 45 and a half point line, but you get the threat of Josh Allen on the ground and you get the threat of Josh Allen through the air, just short of a 16% chance of being uh, north of 30 fantasy points and an 11% chance of just simply being in the optimal overall. Josh Allen is my number one quarterback. Alrighty, folks, that will do it. Go hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and follow me on Twitter at Josh Engelman because that is the end of my NFL DFS top five for DraftKings week three in the NFL. Good luck this Sunday. Check out the FanDuel version of this video. It's around here somewhere. I will be back with updates Sunday morning-ish for all of the top fives across every single position. So good luck this Sunday, everybody.